My brothers and sisters, you are now watching the Gamer 2323, so just forget about the chores you're supposed to do. Put your feet up, get your Kool-Aid, fried chicken, popcorn, get whatever you may need. And I hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so since this year is swiftly coming to an end, um, 2015 was a freaking blur. <laughs> uh, I decided to do my personal top five games of 2015. You know, this year we've... We've had a good, uh, you know, a good amount of uh, good games. At the same time, we've had some um, disappointing games. But, you know, I'd say 2015 was easily uh, better than 2014, you know. So this is going to be my top five games of 2015. My personal top five games of 2015. Emphasis on the, on the word personal, okay? Personal. Repeat after me. Personal. Repeat after me, so yes, personal, because I swear, if I see some comments down in, in the comments section below, like, how the heck you didn't include this game? This is my list, you muggle. Now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to say my personal top five games of 2015. As always, you guys can leave your personal top five games of 2015 down in the comments section below. Listen, don't let no one sway your opinion on what your top five games are for 2015, sucker. Stick that chest out or stick them next-gen titties out and say what your top five games are. I, I don't care if Black Ops 3 is in your top five. I don't care if The Order 1886 is in your top five until dawn. I mean, Halo 5. I don't care. Whatever your top five games are, sucker, say that junk with pride. Am I preaching in this thing? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, here are my personal top five games of 2015. Number five for me goes to Metal Gear Solid 5. Now, I know a lot of people thought that that game was disappointing. And in some ways it was, right? You know, if you're comparing, you know, just the way that that story was told compared to the previous Metal Gear games, the story of Metal Gear Solid 5, it wasn't as well constructed, you know, compared to the previous Metal Gear games. You know, you would get a cutscene here and there, and then it would just throw you right back into the game. And it, and it was just like, wait, 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 like, where's the story going? Because it didn't really have the same amount of cutscenes as the previous Metal Gear games did. And I, and I kind of felt like that that took a hit because this was the first Metal Gear game that they tried to make open world. And because of that, you know, the story in some aspects took a hit. You know, there were no code, there, there were no code that calls in this game. They didn't really have a lot of cutscenes compared to the previous Metal Gear games. And because of they trying to make it a open world game, and this was the only open world game that kind of felt like it felt like a dead open world game because most of the open, most of the open world was just like land. There was like really nothing to do, like compared to other open world games to where like you can really explore and do all these different type of things. That wasn't in, uh, and that was not in, in Metal Gear uh, Solid 5. Yeah, you did have side missions, but they did get repetitive. I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. So I, I think because of what they tried to do in Metal Gear Solid 5, trying to make it an open world game, a lot of other different, you know, parts of this game took a hit, you know, because of that. But I still thought the game, as far as the story goes, was a, it was a solid game. I still enjoyed playing through the story a lot. I thought it had great characters. I thought it had great gameplay. You know, the cutscenes, you know, it, 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 it was good for the most part. Even, even though, like I said, the story, it could have been more well constructed. I still enjoyed playing through Metal Gear Solid 5. The biggest disappointment, if any, in this game was that freaking online that died the same day it came out. <laughs> like, that's the only thing for me that is that is a complete disappointment in Metal Gear Solid 5. Because I remember when they showed the trailer for Metal Gear Solid uh, online, I was like, bro, I cannot wait to play this junk. That junk came out, died the same day it came out. So, if you want to talk about disappointments, like just a flat-out disappointment, I agree with you. You're talking about the online. But the story... I enjoyed the story. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, the, it wasn't perfect. You know, it, it, it had its flaws, but I still really enjoyed playing through Metal Gear, Solid 5, the fan, the Phantom Pain. This was probably Hideo Kojima's last imprint on this series, you know, because of what's going on at Konami. I still don't know what, what that man did to them over at Konami. But the stories you're, you're now starting to hear, 
come out about how Konami is treating their employees. I'm like, <laughs> why are you still working? It literally sounds like hell over at Konami. And I don't know if all these stories are true, but just like they say, there's uh what's that saying? All 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 stories have 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 a speck of truth to them. So I'm sure like some like some of this stuff is true, but anyways, d despite what's going on at Konami, I still thought that Hideo Kojima did the absolute best he could in the situation that he was in and his pro and his possibly final imprint on the game that he made famous, not you Konami. You should be ashamed of yourself for what you did to that man. Not allowing that man to go to the V, you know, to the VGA awards. How dare you? Anyways, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I, 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 I will put Metal Gear Solid 5, the Phantom Pain, uh, in my top five games this year at number five. Numero cuatro. Oh yeah, my brother speaks Spanish from time to time. Numero cuatro. Number four was one of the most slept on games for me, I think, this year. The way that a lot of these uh, review outlets, uh, what they said about the game, I completely disagree with them. That's why you cannot take everyone's reviews as factual. You gotta take little bits and pieces from, from all of the reviews that you watch and then put them together to form your own opinion of what you think about the game. The way that some of these people talked about this game, I completely disagree with them. I thought this was one of the most slept on games of this year, and that's why I'm putting this game at number four, Evolve. <laughs> no, uh, Dying Light. Dying Light, man, I really enjoyed this game. And I know, like, we've been there, done that so many times with zombie games. It's like, bro, how much more zombie games can we play? From the games to the movies to the TV shows with that Walking Dead, though. We've been there, done that with zombies. And even to a certain extent, I'm getting tired of zombies. But Dying Light, there, you know, there was no confu there was no confusion at all. What they showed you before that game came out you got when, you know, the game came out. Like, like, you know, there, you know, there was no like, oh my God, Dying Light looks free, looks freaking amazing. And then when, and then when it came out, it was like, this is not what I saw. Like what you saw with Dying Light, you got. And I really enjoyed this game. The story was a good, the voice acting was cringeworthy, <laughs> but the, but, but the story was good. The gameplay was fun. I love how, you know, they they uh, put in the whole Mirror's Edge thing and, and just the way you can move around in this game. The whole nighttime aspect to where, you know, when it goes nighttime, then it becomes more like real, you know, just the replay value. I really thought Dying Light was a really slept on game and I really enjoyed this game. The way that the way that Techland is doing the DLC as well in Dying Light. That that alone deserves a round of applause. The way they're doing the DLC in Dying Light, they're keeping people wanting to come back to the game and adding extra content to the game that's actually making it better to play, you know? So I thought Dying Light was a really good game. I definitely disagree with pretty much every review I saw from, like, those major outlets out there. And Dying Light was one of the most slept-on games to me in 2015. So that's why, at number four, I'm putting Dying Light, man. If y'all have not yet to play this game and you like zombie games, uh, definitely pick this game up. Hands down, better than every dead island that has come out. <laughs> you know, so number four for me goes to Dying Light. Now, number three for me uh, is a game that came out not too long ago, you know, and um, I really think that if I had played the other one, it probably would have took the place of this one, but I can't be, I can't be a fraud. <laughs> like, I cannot be a fraud because I didn't, I put maybe like maybe five to six hours in that game. And just because of the fact that I put more hours into this game and I'm still playing, I still have to do my review for it. At number three, I'm putting Fallout, Fallout 4. Now, like I said, I might have put The Witcher 3. The, the Witcher 3 is not in my top five. Just because I only put like five to six hours in, I can't be a fraud and say, this, this is one of my most, <laughs> like, I, I can't do that. I'd be a fraud because I didn't put enough time into The Witcher 3. But that could very well have, today have taken the place of Fallout 4. But just because of the fact I put more time into Fallout, into Fallout 4 and I'm enjoying the game, number three 
is Fallout 4, you know? And again, there's been some people, Fall, Fallout just might not be your type, might not be your type of game. Literally, every time I stream this game, I, I feel like I can't stream it because people are like, bro, this game's boring, play something, <laughs> play, play something else. I don't, I don't feel like seeing this, this, I don't see, I, I don't feel like seeing this PS2 looking trash. <laughs> like, I, I don't stream it, I don't stream it no more. So, Fallout, it's completely fine. It might not be the game for you, and that's fine. Some people might just not like Fallout. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't let these Fallout fanboys make you feel like you have to like Fallout. That's not the case, you know? But for me, I, I'm really enjoying Fallout. You know, a lot of stuff to do. I mean, content freaking everywhere. Uh, so much replay value in this game. It's fun to play. A lot of things to do, you know, um, it's not, as far as on consoles, at least on PS4, I can't speak for how it is on Xbox One. This junk is, it's fine playing, playing this junk on PS4. Yes, it's best to play games like this on PC just because of the fact it's Bethesda, <laughs> but, you know, as much bugs as I expected that Fallout 4 was going to have, I, I really haven't seen, like, no crazy stuff like that. The only thing that pretty much happens constantly is frame rate drops. That's really the only thing. But aside from that, I'm really enjoying Fallout 4 currently. A lot of stuff to do. Almost too many things to do, you know. But, again, just because of the fact I've put more time into Fallout 4 than The Witcher 3. Again, I pro I pro if I put more time in uh into The uh, Witcher that most likely would have took the place of Fallout 4, you know, but I can't be a fraud. <laughs> I can't, I can't be a fraud and say, yeah, I, yeah, I'm gonna put, uh, the, uh, Witcher in my top five, even though I play, I played it for like five or six hours. Like, I can't, I, I can't do that, you know, so Fallout 4 for me, I'm gonna put that in, in my top five and Fallout 4 is at number three. Now, number two for me is, um, it might be a shocker to, uh, some people, but for the, the people that have played this game, you might can understand why I have this in my top five. Number two is a game that is actually just installed on my PS4. I don't actually have a copy of the game, but this was a game that I didn't even plan on playing. <laughs> like, I knew it was out and I was just like, yeah, I like playing games like that, but when I first saw the game, I had no interest in this game at all. And then I was like, you know what? Let me try out this game, because I was trying to do, like, a playthrough on my channel. So I was like, what game can I start with? And I saw this game, and I was like, you know what? Let me try out this game. You know, because, again, I do like games like this. I just never gave this game a chance. So number two for me goes to Matt and Chloe, Life is Strange, man. Life, man, oh man, oh man. Bruh, when you can make me cry, <laughs> when you can make me cry in a video game, and I've cried before in games, like, it's, it's, not, it's not the first time, but very rarely do I feel that attachment to characters, especially in, in a game with little to no game. We, we are playing a point and click simulator with life is strange so if you can make me cry in a game like that you gotta be somewhere in my top five life is strange man if you have not played this game and again you you might not get you might not like playing games like this if if that's the case then don't play it but life is strange my god like never that, that's probably the only game this year to where i felt that attached to the characters, but before Life is Strange, I say the next one behind that was The Last of Us, bro. But the way I felt attached to these characters, the way I got into the story, the shocking moments that, you know, that this story had, um, it was just, I just thought it was special. I, I just thought it was a special game, man. Life is Strange. I gotta, I gotta put that joke at number two, cause man, it was like the first, ep the first episode was slow. Two started to pick up, but once that jump like got to three and four, it was like, <laughs> and then some people thought that the very last episode, the ending to that was kind of lackluster. I mean, I wouldn't say that. I mean, it was just, I, 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 I personally enjoy the final episode yeah there were some dry times in that and you know in that episode but i i just thought 
from episode one to episode five, the way they built up, you know, the very ending and the way the character develop development between Max and Chloe and all these different people and the moments that you did not see coming to the soundtrack. I mean, Life is Strange made me cry. <laughs> it made me cry, dude. Like, I just talk about shedding tears. I had to pause the game. And I literally was like, I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm crying, dude. Like, and if a game can make me do that, again, it's not that 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 wasn't the first time I cried in the game. I think I cried in Metal Gear Solid 4. I shed some tears in The Last of Us as well. I shed some tears in Kingdom Hearts 1, I think, at the very end. Like, I've cried in games before, but it happens rarely. And when I cry in a game, you got me. <laughs> so, number two for me. I gotta pick Life is Strange, man, just because of what that, just the impact that that game left on me personally, I gotta choose Life is Strange. Definitely, if you like playing games like that, definitely you wanna try out Life is Strange. It's definitely a game that if you give it a chance, you might be shocked, <laughs> you know? So Life is Strange for me, at number two. And then there was only one. Number one. Number one for me is a very special game, if <laughs> you know. Uh, well, before I, I say one, so five for me was Metal Gear Solid Five. Four for me was Dying Light. Three for me was Fallout 4. Two for me was Life is Strange. One for me is a game that a lot of people just simply could not play just because you're casual. <laughs> <laughs> they just couldn't do it, bro. I still know some people that are still stuck on the second or third boss in this game. <laughs> <laughs> now, I had my struggles. Y'all see some of the boss fights that I upload. And I got to freaking upload these freaking fights of the DLC. But I'm, 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 I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. But some people are straight up struggling <laughs> with this game. Some people still are like way in the beginning of the game. I'm like, sucker, you ain't even seen nothing yet, bro. But number one for me, y'all might know, number one is also my game of the year this year. I didn't win. It didn't win game of of, of the year at the you know at the V at the VGAs. But for it actually didn't win anything at the VGAs, and I was like. The disrespect, <laughs> you know. But for me, this is my personal game of the year. Um, from just the uh, soundtrack to the challenge to the replay value, just to the satisfaction you got when you finally got past whatever bastard that was in your face, <laughs> it has to go to Bloodborne. No, not a bad Bloodborne. Lord have mercy. The nightmares that I had with Father Cheeks, the cleric beast. I mean, Lord have mercy. My and I wish I would have uploaded this fight, man. That's why I, I I still regret not uploading every single fight. My toughest fight for me personally in Bloodborne so far was the fight. Um, I don't I don't remember the uh, boss's name, but I think it was like boss number seven or eight. The boss with the three ninjas. It was like three ninjas with swords. That fight for me, <laughs> bro. When you, bro, you would have thought I was a pirate. The way that I, 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 I was saying all types of stuff. <laughs> I was cursing left and freaking right, dude. My God. But Bloodborne for me, and because this was my first, you know, uh, some, you know, some, somewhat of a Souls game. I wasn't prepared for what, you know, how Bloodborne actually was. I never played any of the Souls games, you know. So once I found out, okay, this is what I'm getting my, my, myself into, it's like there's two types of, uh, people. It's like you have those gamers that, okay, they're going to accept that challenge and be like, I'm gonna beat this game. I'm gonna go through these balls. And then you have those other gamers that they're like, I ain't got time for this. <laughs> They're just gonna move on, you know. So if you didn't like Bloodborne or you didn't be, it doesn't really really mean you're a casual. Some people just if if a game is too hard, they're like, freak that. I ain't got time for this. They're just gonna move on to the game. You know, but for me, Bloodborne, for the challenge that game was, the satisfaction I got when I got through those, I have never played co-op in this game at all. I have not yet 
played any boss with a person by my side, I just find that to be absolutely embarrassing. <laughs> if I was to ever need someone's help, have someone by my side to be no sucker. I don't care if I I don't care if I die a hundred times. I will beat that boss by my lonesome one on one with the great one. That is all I did in Bloodborne. And just the satisfaction you got when you beat these bosses, man. The grind it was, the soundtrack, the world you was put in, the creatures you saw, the design of the game. I mean, just. I love Bloodborne. You know, it might it might not have the the best story because I mean, the, 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 there there is a story in this game, but you kind but you kind of have to you know kind of find some things and then and 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 then like put this piece in and this piece together and you know in or in, in, in. I do believe the word that you're looking for is the lore of Bloodborne. I love Bloodborne. I love Bloodborne, and I thought this game was my game of the year. I was kind of sad that this game didn't win any award at the VGA Awards. It didn't win anything. And I was like, really? <laughs> you know, but for me, Bloodborne, uh, I love the game. I love the DLC, even though that junk is <laughs> frustrating the mess out of me, bro. But, uh, I'm gonna, and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna upload those other fights. But, um, yeah. Bloodborne for me is my number one game of 2015. This was my game of the year this year of 2015. Um, so yeah, those are my top five games. Metal Gear Solid 5, Dying Light, Fallout 4, Life is Strange, Bloodborne. <laughs> Bloodborne. So uh, that's my my top five. What are your top five games of 2015? Leave it down in the comment section below. And again, wait before you start before you start typing. Scroll back up to the screen, sucker. Scroll up and look at me. Look at me, sucker. <laughs> before you start typing again, don't let none of these suckers. Sway your opinion of what your top five games are this year. Sucker, I don't care if you put what 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 was what was a trash game this year? What was a trash game? Sucker, I don't care. I'm trying to look for a trash game. <laughs> I don't care if you put and this game wasn't trash, but I don't care if you put Until Dawn. I don't care if you put the order 1886. I don't care if you put Destiny the Taken King. <laughs> Whatever your top five game is, sucker, that is yours. Don't let no sucker try to sway your opinion, you know? So that's my top five games of uh, 2015. My game of the year is Bloodborne. Uh, I just love that game, man. And so what's your top five games of 2015? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Catch y'all on my next one, suckers. Peace.